Good afternoon, family, friends, faculty, and administration. As much as we would like to take all the credit for our success today, we're obliged to take quite a few people without whom we couldn't be here today. To our parents, thank you for supporting us in whatever academic and extracurricular endeavors we chose. It is because of your own sacrifices and unselfishness we are here today. Thank you, Mom and Dad. By the way, this also serves as a reminder to keep sending those money checks and money. Chicago is pretty expensive these days. <laughs> to our teachers, thank you for your mentoring that not only broadened our academic interests, but also our personal perspectives. But more importantly, thank you for using normal distribution curve for the test, so we are always the top of our academic game. <laughs> Relative to the We had to include the match over there. Uh, to our friends, thank you for challenging us intellectually, editing and re-editing our college essays, and most importantly, giving us rides to places on a really short-term basis. Though we have not yet paid for gas, and we probably won't, ever, your efforts do not go unnoticed. And we would like to thank the administration and all the people who have worked behind the scenes for the last 13 years to help all of us get here today. And, as, and lastly, on a personal note, I would like to thank God for his providence and blessing for the last four years of In the spirit of cooperation and collaboration, we're combining our speech speeches, thinking it would be more appropriate for our class. As a Chinese American, and as an Indian American, you know what you're thinking, Harold and Kumai. <laughs> but we want to make this clear. This speech will not mimic the films of Harold and Kumar in any way. First, just when I say this, Harold and Kumar 3 making a valedictorian speech would be a bigger disaster than Bruce trying out for the football team. And props to some of you who got that Harold and Kumar reference. For those of you who didn't, that joke was probably a bigger disaster than Tink trying to get a date for prom. In any case, this was a tall order. We were structured, but not boring. Inspirational, but not cheesy. And edgy, but not it. So, when we first looked for intellectual enlightenment, we went to the internet. Uh, first, we weeded out the ball cats and uh, the epic fail videos on YouTube, which we spent the first three hours. But, after searching other YouTube videos for inspiration, we can best describe the speech as a mixture of Weird Al's White and Nerdy song and Barack Obama's inaugural address. <laughs> so, here's how it goes. Um, we thus relativize discourse not just to form the familiar perversion of the modernist, nor to authorial intention that conceits of the romantics, nor to the foundational world beyond discourse that desperate grasping for a sense of reality, the mystic and scientist alike, nor even to history and ideology for those refugees of the hermeneutics, nor even less to language that hypothesized abstraction of the linguist, nor ultimately even to discourse that Nietzschean playground of moral classifiers of the structuralist and rheumatologist, but to all or none of these things, for it is anarchy, though not for the sake of anarchy, but because it, is, it refuses to become a fetishized object, among objects to be dismantled, compared, classified, and neutered in the parody of scientific st study known as criticism. Alright, that was a joke, like the majority of the speech. But if you hadn't figured it out already, that wasn't entirely us. That was actually an uh, excerpt uh, taken from a bad writing contest online by Steven Tyler. However, we figured it would be appropriate to place it here after four years of countless papers, internal assessment, extended essays, and TOK uh, papers. Regardless, writing the speech was just as hard as characterizing our IQ class. Many students came from all different types of neighborhoods, literally ranging from opposite sides of Hillsborough County to attend Robinson High School, and now 84 of us are here today. For all the IB students out there, you know you're an IB from the following. You know you're an IB if you went to sleep at 1 a.m. and thought, wow, it's really early tonight. <laughs> and you know you're an IB if you have more energy drinks than meals in a week. You know you're an IB, you know you're an IB if you finish the test and you felt you had been violated. And you know you're an IB if you can count your last words straight on one. You know you're an IB 
if you would write this valedictorian speech the night before it was due. At least three minutes. students out there, well, some of the experiences above our the, the positive experiences will be the ones you will always remember. And to the IB graduates here, we are all bonded with these positive experiences. But ultimately, our talents, abilities, and interests couldn't be more diverse. Artists, musicians, athletes, writers, and scholars, these are just some of the broad terms I'm going to begin to describe us today. Regardless, I think it's more than obvious this was a tough process for the both of us since we were doing it together. On top of that, we, agree on, we disagree on some of the most fundamental issues known to man. First, we disagree on the leadership style of James T. Kirk and Star Trek or original version. And also the concept of dialectical materialism versus dialectical idealism. Tink personally thinks that Elvish would be a better language to impress girls. I think Klingon is much better and superior. That's right, Klingon is disgusting. Anyway, Kant versus Kierkegaard. Personally, Kantian ethics. And most importantly, I'm an avid supporter of Team Jacob. Team Ever, guys. Come on, Team Ever. Alright, well, on a side note, we just included all those Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, and Twilight reference to look, all, to look cool to all the kids out there, so, yeah. You're pretty hip. <laughs> so as you can imagine, with such stark differences, it was hard to find a common message that would appeal to different viewpoints in the IB class, along with the different viewpoints of the traditionals. With all the jokes aside, what we're really trying to say is this. Our differences is what makes our, is what makes our class unique. From hilarious quirks to opposing political viewpoints, our entire Robinson class is made up of different ide ideal ideas and ideals. And that's why our Robinson class this year is very special. Now, for the obligatory series mode. Today, as all of us leave our comfort zones at Robinson High School, we, went, we enter into another diverse community full of these differences, the real world. I'm sure that all of us will face People of different races, religious beliefs, intellectual curiosities, and interests. We will meet people who will, who will reaffirm our beliefs and reinforce our values. We might also meet some people with similar interests, viewpoints, and maybe political and religious belief systems. But at other times, we'll meet people whose ideas may come into conflict with our own. During these times, we can't ignore these differences. Rather, we must embrace them. We can't. We can't ignore them for the sake of mere comfort. Rather, we must learn from them, even at the risk of these conflicts. We must ask questions. We must keep a flexible and an open mind, not only for our sake, but for the sake of our respective communities. In this way, our learning has not yet ended. It has merely begun. A prevailing life is a life that seeks to think, thrive, and explore. It is the one that is not satisfied, rather seeks to discover new things. Class is one in ten, so that is what we wish for you. A fulfilling life full of differences, questioning, and knowledge. Embrace the possible failures and differences, learn from them, and most of all, always think, try, and explore. Congrats in 2010.